Hello, I am Radagast, and I have a special show tonight because I'm being joined by Raksha Moose, and the title of this is The Mystic and the Moose Talk Community. And um, he's a healer, a shaman, and community builder, and he's already sharing the screen with me, so let me unmute him and welcome Raksha. Hello. Hello. How are you tonight? I'm feeling in the mood for uh, discussing community and, um, and and I guess ways to improve it. I I agree. I I'm definitely excited about this uh, collaboration, and I'm excited about the conversations that we've had leading up to this. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely I can't say we came to this without doing some homework and preparation to make this meeting special. So when we talk about community, um, what would you say that we're talking about? Some form of tapestry weaving where we are threads in part of a greater coherence and um and the th you know just what it is like to be connected at that level and then it's not a hive mind but hive mind is always get everybody thinks of borg instead of a beehive you know which is kind of a different setup but you kind of you know again there's a there's the the greater tapestry made up of the threads and that the, getting to realize that you know as you any thread that moves has an effect on the tapestry especially in the community and not you know in the commons the moment you bring whatever your personal stuff is it doesn't so much tug on the threads it might be a little shimmer for some of the more sensitive people but you know it's when we're in the commons when we're interacting with each other that being part of that tapestry there's all kinds of pulls and tugs and whatever, and some of them make it kind of nice, and some of them make it occasionally make it look like, you know, we need to pull us out a little bit. Or it's starting to bind over here. And, um, and then the skill set that we all can explore for looking at ourselves and then always doing that review after, a, a, you know, especially, you know, like before you go to bed or something, or sometimes just when everything's quiet, looking at your own performance in personality, because if you don't come from your personality, you'll be boring. I mean, if we all were not high as higher selves, we'd be, you know, we'd, you know, be like, Oh yes. We, you know, I mean, it would be, it would be goofy. Um, so we have to bring our personalities cause that's, that's, you know, that's where the human is. That's, you know, that's where some of the fun and, you know, rock and rolling comes from. But, um, you know, again, that, that, that greater awareness of the connectivity, I guess, is what I'm really getting at. Um, and then how knowing that you're always feeding back into the whole, you know, like, what can you do to be a cool thread? You know, how can I be cool? You know, how can, you know, like, what's my purpose? Not like, how can I, you know, shine per se, but like, how, you know, like, you know, it's like music or something, you know, it's like, well, you know, what my skill set. And for me, um, it was like learning personalities. Um, and then, and then realizing maybe like, you know, checking with myself, okay, that personality rang this bell. Well, let's look at that bell because the bell's in me. And then from, you know, when you look at that, then you start saying, okay, well, actually the answer, you actually, you know, usually can get some answers on things and go, okay, so let's, we don't, that bell doesn't ring like that anymore. And you just kind of, you know, configure yourself because you've sought to know other people. You, um, you look for the good in them also, you know, you, somebody could be really bugging you, but okay, what's the good part? Because if you, this person bugs you so much, the good part must be the easy part to find. <laughs> So, <clears throat> while we were discussing a lot of things building up to this, um, I was contemplating the last um, almost two decades in, in community building. And I look at community a lot like jazz, like a jazz ensemble. And um, I know that a lot of people define community by 
common interests or common likes or sometimes uncommon interests and likes. But I tend to view community as a whole structure. Um, and I, I tend to not continually other the others and create sub-factions of sub-factions of sub-factions. You know, we have to keep the, the Star Wars fans away from the Star Trek fans because that's one community that can't blend well with the other. Um, I try to find ways in order to um, build a harmonious space where people that generally would not find a way to play well with others, um, to recognize that we all have commonalities and we all have at least an interest of self-preservation or an interest of um, protecting our families or an interest of discovering what it is inside of ourselves that ticks or we want to grow in, um, something like that. And then you, you start from that one small thing and you just continually grow and grow and grow. And by the time that you turn around, you realize that you do have a community of um, multifaceted individuals that again, like jazz. Um, and it might sound a little sour to other people that are looking in, but to the rest of the individuals that are participating, they're just riffing off of each other. And it can be a very beautiful and harmonious thing, even if there is a little bit of dissonance. Um, there tends to be a resolve within a healthy community. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it was really interesting as you, you know, you mentioned the jazz and um, I, I almost had a response, but I think I'm not going to respond. Um, I like the jazz concept and uh, especially if one does not bring one's musical curmudgeonness with them. Um, you know, basically, you know, jazz is made by skilled musicians, um, which is will be a statement. In fact, you know, as far yes. as you know, what when you think jazz, you think of a certain musical style done by very schooled musicians who are breaking their the rules in the ways they find creative and interesting. But they know what the rule they they know what the structure is. I don't want the word rules, but they know what they know the structure that they're playing with is. They know what it looks like before they bend it. They know how far to bend it before it starts to lose its own legs because of structural deformities. Um, and so that would probably be the, I ended up saying what I was gonna say, but I think I did it more artfully. Um, I, I think if you don't mind if I riff off of that a little bit, oh. um, I think that's a perfect analogy for community builders that that understand the rules and what works and what potentially doesn't and know how far you can bend those rules before the legs fall out that was um, and our jobs as as community builders is to help train the next wave to be able to do the same. Not only to teach them the fundamentals and the theory, and um, if we're gonna go along the, the musical, because you're talking to another musician here, um, but also um, <clears throat> the heart and the soul and the passion behind it. And that not every mistake is a bad note. Right. Or a misstep. Um, but yeah, um, I dig it. You like opened it. up a huge door for me there and I saw I'll share it where again, from the, you know, the kind of snobby musician point of view. And then, you know, when you just mentioned about, I, for some, this door opened of like, you know, that's part of community building. And that when, then when I realized was that by letting everybody play, you kind of know who's who. 
you know, if you had a door where you need this skill to be past this door, you wouldn't be able to assess where people are in that mix if you don't let them audition. And um, so I, that opened like this door, a, a resource of, of what from one perspective could look like a little like, eh, you know, a little, a little discoherent, you know, a little incoherent there, whatever. And then realizing that, oh my God, this is, that's basically a form of the chaos that is just looking to find its way into the form and, um, and how the most human thing about us is that we always seek to reclaim our own. We, you know, the body's living is what counts to humans. The anti-human side, the body's dead is a job well done. For us, the body's reclaimed, brought back in. That's a job well done. If you, if you listen every so often, I'll throw out there, the children will play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's when I know that it's essentially as I, I'm. I'm so enjoying this, as as you would say, the auditioning process. Um, a little, I guess, peek behind the curtain. No props, but the curtain. Um, that's me get getting a feel of what what's actually happening in the greater community. Um, and who's really where at any given moment. And that includes people that are part of um, the core team helping to build and develop community. Mm -hmm. um, just because someone might be there at one point doesn't mean that they're going to be there in three months. Mm -hmm. And I guess kind of to explain for those that may be unfamiliar with me, um, I have a channel currently um, that's been going for almost five months now where we focus on um, building community and equipping, giving tools for um, walking the healing path and um, basically it's open to anybody that wants to participate and join in community and learn what community is. Um, so just a little background information on, on where I'm coming from in this. Um, but it's also during that time the the children will play it's also a, a chance to to cut loose and let our hair down a little bit too because not everything is so serious and boxy and structured and um and that kind of goes back to the the jazz analog uh, analogy um knowing when to bend the rules and when to um just take it away mm -hmm. and Sometimes when you show up and you, you think that you know what you're going to say and it's just so right for that night, and then you meet another uh, wave of energy from the rest of everybody else, and mm -mm, nope, not right for that night. They're not having it. They don't want to hear it. Um, but then from what they're throwing at the screen or whoever's presenting, um, if you're a good listener and it goes beyond listening, but hearing, um, that, that also gives you a clue into what the community needs are. And then instead of speaking what you've prepared, which could also be a valuable thing, um, you're speaking to the needs of the community as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of back and forth give and take, but not in the traditional give and take, um, push and pull. Um, and in that we find an overall balance, which is greatly missing in today's modern civilized society. 
Well, what was bringing me back actually also, and this will segue into another kind of discussion, is how when I was, you know, in my teens, hanging out with my buddies, I could number 15 or more. Basically, we, there were different, different times at different person, their parents went home, whatever, and we congregated their house. And gen- it tended that it was like my house and I had another friend in his house and occasionally another house. And, you know, there were some people who were, who were less dependable, but, you know, they, when they had it open, we'd go there. So like a real community, this particular community has a few places that have regular open houses. I'm actually not one of them. I don't have an open house. But you have an open house. Jerry Cthulhu has an open house. C.W. Chanter has an open house. And every once in a while, uh, Yvonne a Groovy Bean. A lot, Yvonne a Groovy Bean. And the reason I bring her up is because she, um, when, when, like, you know, if she turns off her camera and, you know, like, you know, her avatar, is a sign that she has about who are you without your story? Have you ever seen that behind her? That's what, that's, that's her question. Who are you without your story? Mm -hmm. And I just found, I find that one of the most meditative questions and also, and also profound because of its inward look and then how, and what the, and it also asks the question, look inward and what, what do you, what would you bring outward with, without this, you know, if, if you were limited from your story as a way of coming into the world, how would you come into the world? Um, you know, I saw it for myself. I said, well, I could still, you know, I wouldn't have to speak and I could still do my body work and I could still make music. You know, I could still help somebody dig in their garden. I mean, there are, I, there's a bunch of skills, you know, and sometimes just the willingness to work and be directed um, that I could offer without anybody knowing anything about me. Mm-hmm. And so I just found that a really challenging question. Um, and one that also ties into community because it's also kind of like, you know, what, you know, like in other words, without your story, what, what are you bringing into the community? I really like that. I really like that. It, it takes the, um, well, here's my resume. And here's all the amazing accomplishments and all the me, me, me's and I, I, I's out of it. And it, it puts more of a meat, I guess, to it. Um, because we, we all have stories. We all come from somewhere. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that we can all show something for it. Um, part of, uh, not part of, a lot of the work I do on the the shaman side is in walking people through healing, um, is helping them essentially let go of their story or let go of um, the ties that bind them to who they perceive themselves to be based off of the things that they've encountered, endured, or suffered through traumatic events, or even the tiniest slights that they can't seem to get over. Um, And so that is a very interesting question that I might have to start including in part of that process. I really enjoy that. Yeah, and that's and you know that's why I actually wrote her down because I knew I would remember the other ones, and I, I said, you know, Yvonne has to get props just for bringing that question into. The oh yeah. Universe. And so, uh, go ahead. We were talking, or you had brought up the the other um, open communities. Do you want to give space for for that right now? Yeah, if, um, I'll I'll riff a little bit. Um, you know, for me, um, kind of like ha- the flavor of the hangout. So we'll, st- you know, I'll start with Jerry Cthulhu. The flavor is we're entering a mental space, basically go for it. You, there is, and there's the, there may be a counter 
um, opinion of something, but there's no stu- there's you can't say anything that you would you know suddenly could feel embarrassed about. I mean, it's a place to throw anything out there, and and in his own nurturing way, Jerry, he kind of provides this environment where there's this that ex- complete safety to just shoot off your mouth. Um, trying to stay on topic, um, but the topic shifts dynamically also. It's a very heady um, experience. C.W. Chanter, who, who pulls down other people's pants better than him? <laughs> I mean, we kind of pick somebody who thinks they're somebody and might be, he might think their story doesn't hold up and he goes and deep pants them. Truth. And no matter, and I've never seen any, you know, anybody, you can occasionally get some commenters who you f- fall slightly on, you know, having their permanent residence under a bridge. And I've never seen anybody handle people better than CW. I mean, some, I feel like somewhere in, there's like an inner troll in CW, which is part of this deep pantsing thing. Mm-hmm. So when somebody dares to troll him, oh man, <laughs> So there's there's just this room, and but he has a good heart, you know what I mean. I've I've seen him be gracious. I've seen him be very. He's very honest, you know. Like there there were some discussions at one point about him leaning towards the dark side or something, and I'm like, first of all, so what? A person who declares who they are is not a mystery. I mean, somebody's not. Can't, if somebody's telling you where they are, where they're coming from, then they're then they've revealed themselves. There's, there is a powerful honesty. Take it what you will. True. But you know, it's, you know, so the, all of this kind of like, Ooh, what about you? No. You know, Ooh. I mean, I mean, again, he's not leaving you guessing. And, and, and again, if you've listened to his chanting, if you know, you know how he was raised, he's, you know, he's, he's CW chanter, you know, I mean, that's what he, that's where his name come from. CW chanting his own religion. He was going to start. Commonwealth chanting. Commonwealth chanting, right. And so he and, and and just as a, a little stroke I'll stroke the beard, but I won't kiss your ring, sir. Um that's where I I made my debut was on Chanter's channel and he was nice enough to basically help me get my my start and learn a lot of the behind the scenes ropes as far as running a channel, mm-hmm. doing live hangouts. Um, and when I branched off and started my own channel, um, I have a lot of, of thanks to give to CW for that. And even before and after, a lot of the people that I know now is thanks to CW Chanter. So I just, I have to take the moment to stroke the beard and say, thank you, CW. Yes. Thank you. Um, You also did the same for me. And Jerry is one of the wonderful people that I, I was lucky enough to meet. You're one of the people that I was lucky enough to, to be introduced to. And again, so it's like communities overarching under an umbrella of community. Well, I haven't hit you with that, that brush yet. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm hiding now. <laughs> you, know, you know, now we might, who knows, I might slip in between first and, and third person. <laughs> I thought we were going first and third base. <laughs> uh, I, hmm, first base, that would be nice. Um, <laughs> so, okay, Raksha Moose. The, the place where you go to examine yourself. Um, in both your own mirror and his mirror. A, um, and an insight because of how much he works with so many people there's a certain reflection of, of the, the cumulative energy that comes out of him um, as he expresses certain things and it allows you to 
just get at least a pheromone of people you don't know. Um, and pheromone might actually be too powerful a thing, kind of like you know, a hint, because pheromones are powerful. Um, and and it's the interesting thing is, you may not you may not think you want to be there sometimes. Um, cause it, um, it's just looking in a place that often doesn't get looked at or looked into. And, and sometimes things are fairly in order or even in order, but, um, so some, you know, some, but to make the journey, to make the complete journey, cause he takes you on a journey requires you kind of stay with it as much as you can. The dialogue, the di you know, the dialogue is a path. And, and occasionally I've had like, I have to refresh it and I drop it out. And the, you know, a broken narrative is like, is, you know, is it, tricky. I mean, you can skip up ahead in the path, but there was a few, there was a few herbs growing on the side of the path there that you didn't, uh, that were part of the narrative that you miss. And, um, but you know, it's just I guess you know if if you're into psychic hygiene, and you don't necessarily have to wait until you think, oh, I need a cleanse. How about just go through the cleansing process? And many cleansing processes, you know, have the ickiness, whether it's a neti pot in your nose, an enema, whatever. A cleansing process is a cleansing process. And, you, and sometimes you could say, ah, I'm clean. I don't need it already. And you might not need it, but it's never. It's just like, that's why I'm saying sometimes like, you know, you, you might not want to be there because you might be doing it, but to, to, you, you kind of get your second, your second opinion on what you thought. You kind of get a confirmed opinion now by taking the walk. If you thought you were good and didn't need that walk at the end of the walk, you know, one way or the other, whether you did. So if you want your spiritual colonic, come see Moose. <laughs> a, a jest. I, Partially. I hope, I hope my, my language uses didn't bind you there somehow. No, I liked, I liked what you, uh, I liked what you said. Cause it was, it was truthful. Um, <clears throat> when you started with the, the reflections, um, that has been a topic of a lot of deep conversation. Um, and there's actually been a, a name attributed to that, a uh, very simple called the mirror effect. And um, what people have experienced is when they're looking at me and I'm saying something that they're getting very, very upset about or very angsty or angry about, um, it's, it's actually not me at all. They're looking at themselves through a, a mirror, basically, a reflection. Um, and so then, yeah, it's time to look in the mirror at your crappy self and figure out what bell was it hitting, what what thing, it wouldn't sting if it wasn't true kind of a thing. And what part does the individual then need to look at, self-examine, and walk through? Um, and... <laughs> I do know and I recognize that my my speech pattern is a little bit different partially because I have neurological issues. Um, I had a back-to-back -back grand mal seizure last year and then a, um, a concussion. So that also played into a, a, a flipping in my, my speech pattern um, and when I first stepped out into doing, um, non-panel shows where it was just CW and I, we had a, um, a co-hosted show for eight volumes and then I started my own channel. Um, there was a lot of great descriptors for the way I speak. Um, and... One of the best ones, though, that I liked was it's like going on a walkabout and how you were describing. Um, 
we start at the beginning, we go all the way around, and then we go back to the very beginning, and I drop you back off. And the whole way along, I'm pointing out different things, and it might seem to have relevance at the time or might not, and we keep going, I might reference that first thing again. Um, but at some point, it does all pull together, um, hopefully, that's the idea. Um, a lot of times I do have an idea of where I'm going ahead of time, which is always good um, when you're going on a walkabout. Um, but I also do have an approach to, to it like, again, jazz. Um, and at, at my channel, I do spend a lot of time with the live chat, um, interacting with the live chat. Um, and I find that there's a lot of great participation, a lot of great conversation in the live chat. And I find it to be a very unique little section of YouTube that I haven't been able to find anywhere else. So why not build it? Mm -hmm. Um, as you were speaking about it, and it's just about that reflection, again, as I always try to find analogy, and often they're in music. And also because I'm, I'm a professional musician. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a pro's pro, but I'm professional. Um, I have a few people who I put in, in that, that category, and I play with him, which Robbins. But, um, <laughs> excuse me. The whole thing is almost like, you know, on any given time, especially if I'm, you know, my, I'll keep my guitar in tune. But, and you can usually, usually you check and your guitar's in tune. But it isn't always in tune when you thought it was in tune. And, um, and so like, and especially in a recording thing, especially if you assumed you're in tune, then you hear the playback and you go, ooh, maybe I should have checked my tuning before I began that recording. Got to do another take now. Sorry for wasting your time or, you know, not. And so it's, it's that kind of, I guess, desire for impeccability. I mean, it's can't, not to overdo anything, but to, to spend a little more time doing things that are for, in many ways, to certain, you know, what your skill level is, rudimentary. And never forgetting that the rudiments are often the place that, you will that that get overlooked and and they're the foundation on everything else and uh so it's just again the the it to me it, that taking that walk doing that self-reflection no matter how wholesome and and good shape you are is just a form of impeccability checking your tuning before you're about to do something is never old hat uh ocd <laughs> It's just like, are we, re are we ready to roll? And right. anytime we engage with each other, trying to come as ready to roll, as genuine and authentic and real and untroubled as possible. Yes. Um, you know, so I'm just, uh, this has been quite a fun conversation. <laughs> what, I, what I focus on a lot <clears throat> in community building is trying to ensure that people have the skills to function in community. Mm -hmm. We in America and a lot of the first world, quote unquote, first world civilizations, countries are very individualistic. Um, the family systems have been broken their backs have been broken for over a decade, two decades now. Um, people are very focused on commercial and commerce gratification and instant gratification. The rise of, I call it anti-social media, um, has led to a great... Um, divide and disassociation from the integral connection that we as human beings require. And 
through that process, a lot of us just lose the skill sets required to interact yeah. in, in a community of any sort, whether it's of shared and common interests or just in the greater community at large. And that's what I'm focusing on more so um, at, I call it my channel just for distinction, mm -hmm. but I look at it as a community center or a house with a lot of different rooms and they have different titles and different descriptions. You kind of have an idea of what you're walking into before you go into it. So if it's not your cup of tea, then you know that you don't have to spend your time. Um, and, and even in that, a lot of people I'm, I'm finding are just checking out what's going on just to see what is going to be reflected on or discussed or interacting with other people in the community that are there, but not necessarily for what's happening in that room on the screen, but what's happening in the community. And that's, that's also okay too. Mm -hmm. um, again, because even though my name's on the channel, it, a, a name has to be on the channel. Someone has to run the channel. Um, I also come at it from a point of greater among equals um, where I don't look at it as a, a dictatorship or um, I'm the leader of the community and um, there, there are times, though, where, you know, decisions have to be made and things have to be modified and tweaked. But as a whole, it's to, to give people back those tools and those skills to interact with people, um, at least on a level where we can be open and honest and have dialogue and discussion without immediately being triggered and retreating back to our echo chambers or um, not being able to have a difficult discussion mm -hmm. or hearing a dissenting voice because I'm offended or I'm hurt, superficially hurt. Right. Um, and I think that's, that's an important thing that's missing from society. So, and we can, and that's what, really what we're part of what we're building or it's, or almost reinstalling in certain cases, because there are certain skills of being in community that technology and just the general zeitgeist of, of, of the current times have removed people from, um, and you know, it's just technology is great. We wouldn't be doing this without it. But are we using technology or is it using us? Exactly. There are certain people who I see technology owning. Yes. And the we, that is giving up our human sovereignty. And that's manageable. That it, that's manageable through awareness. And just remembering you need to stay as the, you are what's important. The technology is your servant. And there's nothing wrong with taking something that has nothing to do with life and calling it your servant. There's nothing demeaning because there's no emotional content to a gadget. It's fine for it, technology to be your servant. That's what, and we, and, and it's important in many ways to keep the upper hand psychologically about our technology and how we use, make sure that we use it. So in this adventure, <clears throat> that is community building, um, we come across other communities, such as the one that you have and that you're involved in. Right, yes. And then the ones that you've mentioned before, Jerry's, CW's, Yvonne's. Right. And I think this is a very exciting time because it's not just here it's not just an isolated incident but what i'm i'm seeing not just on youtube but in tangible physical space and also in the 
electronic space is that communities that have different stated goals are starting to join together, mm -hmm. are starting to have open dialogue. So again, it, it's going from a specific community with a specific stated goal um, and it's unothering the others. Nice. And it's saying, oh, I have a community or I'm a part of a community, you're part of a community too? Cool, what are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. Can we can we share space or can we join together? Can we have a dialogue? That seems really cool, what are your thoughts? And it's it's repairing and restoring, again, that tapestry that has become ratted and mud-stained and blood-soaked. Yeah. And again, just just very excited. Um, you were mentioning about um, does technology use you or do you use technology? And one of the things on on the on my channel, I feel weird saying my channel because it's not really the language that I use. Um, I normally say the community, but now this is a different iteration of the community. It's your channel. Um, is I don't mention names when I'm calling out a specific grievance or a specific thing. I find that to be counterproductive to community building. Oh yeah. Um, so just getting that out of the way, we recently had an experience um, where just by being together and having communion, the entanglement or being enraptured by technology um, that siren song can lose or start to lose its grasp on someone if there's actual interpersonal react action and reaction with other people, mm -hmm. people, persons. And it doesn't only help the one individual, but it can have a domino effect to help other individuals as it starts to unravel this tangled knot of issues real or perceived, again, because the dynamic of community has been at least downgraded in priority, if not completely smashed all over the ground. Yes, and trivial, trivialized. I mean, yes. There is, there is a, a sense of certain people calling themselves the alt community, a faceless people. You know, what I mean, it's just who are you? I, if I sat next to you on a bus, I wouldn't know who you are. And so the, that, to me, what we're kind of doing is taking the trivial aspect of call of that as a community. I mean, it has its own community, but there's a, there's a real deep organic human meaning to community, and, yes. and it it has a there's a personal nature to it. You know, it's it's. It isn't about an anonymity. It's quite the opposite. We honor privacy, but an anonymity, that's beyond, that's beyond the privacy of a community. We were talking um, in the pre about the difference between a construct and a building. Would mm -hmm. you like to to take that a little bit? Yeah, uh, sure, I don't even remember who used the word. I did. Okay. Well, I, I said builder. Yeah. And and you you kind of took on cuz I something I was listening to it was last night and they had used the word construct and somebody said, "Oh yeah, that's their word." And I went, "Damn right, that's their word." You know, that we build. Mhm. Mm I had, met, I had mentioned the the usage of con and construct. That was it. Then that was the moment. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, there's so many data streams that come in that often it's I do kind of remove the personal from the data. And so I just I 
to me, that was like just so huge because that we could, but careful management of language is part of the way of breaking the spell. Nice. Using words that actually tie into the earth, organic human experience and words that are kind of mechanical, kind of Lego set stuff. And, um, and just, you know, so just realizing that we build things, you know, we grow things. We're part of a growth and building, uh, not construct. Um, and just, just little ways like that of just taking back, uh, you can feel the power when, you know, when you hear a builder, you know, it's people, people build things. And, um, so, you know, even the fanciest architects, you know, they, they need builders. So we're always building and they make, Oh yeah, my construction. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, but we built it. It's, you know, I mean, again, it, this all seems like nuanced stuff, but Frequencies are nuanced, you know, I mean, frequencies move in very nuanced gradations and, but there are points where that shift, it can be very, especially if it's moving slowly, when you get into it, actually another groove goes unnoticed. And so by becoming more aware of these nuances and owning the language, really, like I, I last night, I, I might have been on your show, I used a glib phrase, something, and then and it was poor choice of language so it was easy to dismantle it a little bit from my intent because i had gotten lazy for a second use something that was easily understood but just as easily rearranged and so when you're laying down a good sentence you you lay it down in a way that is part of this part you can't really move it without affecting all the other words where there's some of these other almost like cliche type phrases, very mobile. And that mobility is not the best thing when you're really trying to deliver an idea. And it's, you know, it's with almost with the precision of telepathy, but requiring words. <clears throat> the, um, the idea of not being bothered by nuances always astounded me. And I asked someone about, about this using this example. You don't care about nuances or the pettiness of words until you have to sign a legal document. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something Re nobody should ever have to do. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's in that smaller print you find the nuances and you better believe you want to know what's in that contract mm -hmm. you want to know what you're you're binding yourself to and what what you're making a declaration yes of. only the and devil requires a signature so know who you're dealing with <laughs> and so it, it is in those those smaller spaces that the majority of the important details are found and it could make something blossom into a beautiful thing or it can call death and doom upon something mm -hmm. just with a flip of a single word. And but it also the most important one of the more important things with each other is to understand each other. Thank you. And, so, and because if we don't, that's where misunderstandings come from. And so now, so now then we come back to if we're going to be sharing ideas, showing some care for the language we use can prevent misunderstandings. Yes. And in that, I guess that's kind of my cue. Um, one of the things that I talk about constantly um, is not only individuated language, that each one of us, let's say, we'll just use you and I, we both speak English. But in speaking English, we both have our own individuated language mm -hmm. of how we speak English. We have our own tone, tonalities, our inflections, 
our, the curvature of our words. Um, and in that, we also have our individuated filters of how we receive others' individuated languages. Mm -hmm. And part of community building, um, as community builders, and it, it, it does start with the builders and those that already have the knowledge, is to start to understand, listen, and hear, and get to know others' individuated languages. And in doing so, you minimize those miscommunications that can lead to those petty disagreements and arguments that will more often than not cause the implosion explosion of a community before it even gets off the ground. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to say how many friendships I've seen and disastrously over the smallest of misunderstandings because of language, misunderstanding of the individuated language. When someone looking in from the outside can go, oh, I knew what he meant, and I knew what this person misheard. And if, you know, the times that someone can step in and say, okay, hold on, this is what happened, and then it's, oh, okay, everything's fine. Otherwise, you have, you know, two families at war for generations and generations. Yes. Um, to, to go to extremes. Sure. sure. Somewhere in between, this is the result of not getting to understand what the other person is speaking and how they're speaking it. Mm -hmm. But also, not working on removing those individuated filters that are built up through our, our wounding in some of us, um, our past experiences that have brought us to a point where anyone that says this particular word is doing this type of behavior. Um, and so again, that's an, another thing that it's not a, a, a every time focus, but a pretty big focus on on building community. Uh, and I also, you know, sometimes, again, it's, uh, it's from self-management, sometimes people will be stubborn and they're saying it's the principle of the thing. And from my experience, generally what happens is pride hides behind principle. It holds up principle, but it's a sheet. And, um, and we, there's a reason why, I mean, I'm, I'm not big on the concept of sin, but it's a metaphor of seven, you know, the deadly sins. Pride is one of them. And it is. If to a community, it is lethal. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I look at, at sin as the archery term of how far off the target you are. Even what it means in Spanish, without. Mm -hmm. you know? So... <clears throat> Very much so. It is it is a deadly sin. How far? If you're off the mark on that one, it it can it can kill the whole thing. Um, especially when it happens in leadership. When leaders stop, not this is another thing I explained too. There's one thing to listen. Listening, you do from the ears, but a lot of times. Ooh, what what ends up happening is it goes from the ears to the mouth and that's just vomiting so actual hearing goes from the ear to the brain down to the heart and the core back up to the brain after it's been processed and then out through the mouth mm -hmm. and once that has happened then you've not only listened but you've heard and then you speak Otherwise, it's just ear to mouth vomit. And the practice of patience in speech or being slow to speak. Um, again, it's, it's a lost art almost. Um, in, in the beginning when I was really recovering from the concussion, one of my favorite 
uh, descriptors for the way I spoke was the living embodiment of a Valium drip. Mm. But I'm, I'm naturally very choosy on how I word things or choose to portray things. Um, I like to use word pictures um, for those that li uh, learn orally or visually. Mm -hmm. And then I also do throw in um, tangible things from time to time for people that are tactile learners. Um, so that's part of the process. But then also recovering from a concussion, I lost a, a good over half of my language. So I was trying to find words that were there but disconnected. So then I was having to find other words to replace them. And um, yeah, uh, I got the comment that I was the living embodiment of a Valium drip. And I, I giggled and I just clapped my hands and I kind of bounced a little bit because that, that actually made me happy. Mm -hmm. um, that someone recognized that I wasn't just vomiting out of the mouth continuously because YouTube is filled with people that believe that they have a lot of sage wisdom and advice to give, mm -hmm. but it just pours from their mouth like stagnant water. Mm -hmm that has just been released. And that was one of my stated intents from the beginning. That is not what I intend to be. Um, I don't care if it stays at one subscriber for five years, mm -hmm. quality over quantity. Um, but I, I guess it, this is kind of curving into intention in community. And, you know, when we go into community space, what, what should we be bringing um, as far as intent or intention? Or should we be going into community space with intention at all? I believe intent goes very well with wisdom. Um, there's a kind of a, a little bit of a Gnostic kind of concept that the first two emanations were wisdom and intent. Because um, wisdom is fine, but without some intention, it might something you know the wisest things might not might be unattended to. But what is that intent? And um, and you could, it doesn't have to be pick one. Like to me, there are, there are multiple levels of intent, but, you know, they should all be wholesome, minimal, you know, minimally, you know, neutral. And, um, and, and the intent to get something from that exchange. And I know um, I'm going to share the link um, on my channel, and there might not be people that have listened to your explanation on the word wholesome. Mm. So would you mind real quick giving um, a brief rundown on, because I think it's, it, it needs to be said as, as much as possible. Okay, well I went looking just at the, what the roots of the word holy, as you know, like holy ghost, I mean, this person is holy. The one that's is spelled with an H. And in each case it either went to the the let's call it you know the Norse tradition holly branch which was considered holy so basically an aspect of nature was considered holy and holly is spelled with an H it's the name of something but when you looked at other words of where it was deriving from when it wasn't deriving from holly it was deriving from words that meant wholesome as like with an H um, and you know, the various other words that came with it, it never sat as the huh or whole sound. It was more the whole, you know, wholesome. And, um, so you mean it, it, it came, uh, wholesome with a W. Yes. Right? Right. Okay. Okay. I just wanted, you said an H, so I wanted to clarify. 
And interestingly enough, the the W is kind of the sign for woman. You know, when you're when certain letters have certain energies. Um, there's, I mean, there's any. It's not just woman. There's even there's a lot of imagery with W to make it. You know that the womb owns that that letter. So in so in many ways, when you find out that what originally, you know, holy should mean like the supreme wholeness, wholesomeness. But it was just kind of interesting how that word to me got constructed in a way that removed the womb from that wholesomeness. And so instead, what instead of wholesome, we got something with a hole. Something was missing. There's a hole in this word because it's not conveying the wholesomeness and, and the hints that might be part of that wholesomeness. So... Um, so being, you know, we there's you know there's a lot of programming with that word. So to, instead of using the word holy, I might say holy, you know, like as in you know, but all, I try to just use the word wholesome, and with wholesome to me having the real meaning of what would be holy, or, you know, something that's whole, not something that has a hole, but something that is whole, and um, and it just there language is is a construct for good or ill and right now when we're looking at least its usage and spellings there's a lot of ill there but it's our it's it's human it's how it's, it's something that we humans can own but we have to take ownership of it we have to see whatever little spells they've woven in there and once we see the spell it can't it, it if you really accept that that's a spell and you understand what how that spell is woven well then it's unwoven and then we get to use our words and we want to weave spells of up upliftment upon each other. It's like we're singing songs. We want to enchant each other. But again, if all, and this is because we live, we we're giving an enchanted planet with an, and we are, we are the, the, you know, the apple of, of God's eye. So, you know, I mean, there, there's something very special about this planet and the human beings that live on it. And it has been messed with. That specialness has been met with envy, jealousy, um, and just, and, and like a ferocity for what we stand for. And, um, but our utility, and we are very useful, is why we still exist. Um, but we're not existing as we were meant to exist. And, and it's through understanding what wholesome is and that we, that the holiness we want is a wholesomeness and not some kind of, uh, storybook construct of what holy is. Because in many cases with the, you know, in many cases that what is holy is holy. And I know there will be some people that will shirk it off and say, uh, you know, what's, what's really the big deal? I, I would just like to point out, it's called spelling. Spell. It, it's called spelling for a reason. Yeah. And the spell of it matters. So when we say holy, are we telling someone that there is a hole in it? Or are we telling someone that it is a fullness? Are we crafting a spell of emptiness? Or are we crafting a spell of fullness? Because nature is by nature. Na Nature is abundant. It's abundant. It's giving. It's flowing. It's always willing to expand in its own exaltation of being. Um, and again, we were, you know, this is our planet and um, we can, we're allowed to be all over it, but it's lose. It's, it's been being poisoned for too long now. And um, there's, you know, there's an awareness to that. Um, but I'm getting off subject. Maybe um, I wonder. If, how do you feel? Do you feel we, we have a good a first edition here? 
I think we have a good foundation. All right. So um, we're calling it a foundation because this is uh, The Wizard and the Moose, um, part one, volume one, that to be decided on later. But um, if, it, if this seems like something, I mean, this is something I'm putting on my YouTube channel right now, and I'll still be make, making Mystic Brews. This is the Moose and the, Mis the Mystic and the Moose. And uh, so if you enjoyed it, um, and I think, I, I, think, I think we did a good one here. Um, please, you know, put, comment um, and give us some feedback, but uh, chances are you should expect us back. <laughs> and I welcome everyone to check out what's happening over at my channel. Um, we have a lively community going. Um, it's Rock and Moose. Raksha Moose. Yep. On YouTube, just, you know, on your YouTube search bar, put in Raksha Moose and you will find his YouTube channel. And of course, if you have not heard of CW Chanter, that's another name to put in there. And Jerry Cthulhu is that monster from the Lovecraft things. Was that C T H U L U? I believe so. Anyway, so thank you for joining uh, our first edition of The Mystic and the Moose, and we'll see you next time.